Hi, my name is Dr. Jason Scott, and today I'm going to talk about biocartilage with autologous chondrocyte augmentation. As we look at the Arthrex cartilage portfolio, we are given opportunities to manage surface lesions, osteochondral lesions, and subchondral lesions. Is it time to abandon traditional microfracture? There is a high rate of subsequent procedures and even failure of subsequent surgical procedures in the setting of previous microfracture. However, augmented microfracture has been shown in an equine model to have improved outcomes when compared to traditional microfracture. Microfracture Plus may address these microfracture shortcomings. A systematic review of 18 studies with a biologic adjuvant to microfractures demonstrated improved clinical outcomes compared to traditional microfracture. At a recent ICRS Congress, we discussed the different generations of autologous chondrocyte implantation. Traditionally, this has been described as a two-stage technique where autologous chondrocytes are harvested, expanded, and then re-implanted at a second procedure. The fourth generation has been described as a single-stage technique where autologous chondrocytes are harvested and implanted at the exact same procedure. The GraphNet facilitates the use of fourth-generation autologous chondrocyte implantation. It allows us to resect and collect the autologous chondrocytes and implant them at the same surgical procedure. Step one, harvest from the notch. During autologous chondrocyte harvesting, it is important not to take subchondral bone, fat pad, or synovium. It is easy to collect this from the notch or from the superior medial or superior lateral trochlear flare. The accompanying video demonstrates intraoperatively harvesting of autologous chondrocytes from the notch. Again, being mindful not to collect subchondral bone or synovium. Step two, remove the autologous cartilage from the GraphNet device. Run the shaver for 30 seconds with no water flowing through it. This enables the graft to be dried prior to passing onto the back table. Step three, mix the autologous cartilage with the allograft biocartilage using the biocartilage mixing syringe. I'm currently using one cc of autologous cartilage and one cc of allograft biocartilage. I'm using PRP and titrating up to the amount of hydration necessary for the graft characteristics I am looking for. Because there is some moisture in the autologous cartilage, I am starting with 0.5 cc's of PRP. The accompanying video demonstrates the titration of liquid to obtain my ideal graft consistency. Step five, mix within the biocartilage mixing syringe and prepare for implantation as usual. I'd like to present a clinical case demonstrating the use of allograft biocartilage augmented with autologous cartilage in a 24-year-old female with a chondral defect of her trochlea and medial femoral condyle. This patient was indicated for implantation and a T3 AMZ to unload our lesions. A diagnostic arthroscopy is used to confirm and define our lesion characteristics. As we can see, our lesion on the trochlea and our lesion on the medial femoral condyle. The lesions are prepared in a traditional fashion, creating vertical walls circumferentially and dissecting through the calcified cartilage layer. PowerPick was then used for marrow stimulation. After our implant is harvested and our lesion is prepared, we are now ready to fill our defect. It is important to slightly underfill the lesion to avoid any hypertrophy risk. Now we seal with fibrin glue. As a surgeon, it is often difficult to sit and wait for the fibrin glue to dry. I would recommend identifying what product you have and how long it takes for this product to dry prior to manipulating and fine tuning. My post-operative protocol involves a post-op range of motion brace locked in extension for 24 hours. CPM is then initiated on post-operative day one, being mindful of any concomitant procedures and making any alterations as needed. I keep the patient non-weight bearing until their first post-operative visit, and at that point we will demonstrate however we want them weight bearing based off of not only the lesion but the concomitant procedures. Physical therapy is then initiated using modalities to include but not limited to Alter-G, bike, pool, and blood flow restriction. Thank you.